All right, let's get it on. Hey gang, welcome to the Gray State. And today I'm going to be expanding my look at tactical kind of stuff, the tactical lifestyle stuff. Like I mentioned here in 2020 on the channel, expand a little bit. And as I was thinking about what are the things I want to talk about, flash lives, wallets, you know, all that kind of stuff. One thing that I think that a lot of people think about all the time, they pick one up if they have the ability to, is the tactical pen. And right here, I've just got a normal old clickety click pen. Uh, but I was sitting on post the other day, bugging my partner, kind of clicking the one that I'm going to show you here in just a second. And it just kind of occurred to me that this would actually be kind of something cool because it's something that we all use uh, still on a daily basis, whether we use it in our normal everyday lives or for those of us in public safety, we depend on them. And I say that in the, the kind of most literal sense because we do a lot of administrative paperwork with the general public. And it's something that we all kind of have. We have our pens and it's something that I use on a regular basis. And I've come across one that is fundamentally changed. I've actually just fallen in love with it over the last couple of weeks. It's a pen that um, I picked up out of my own accord. I didn't get it. It wasn't lent to me. It wasn't sent to me for eval or anything like that. I just got to be completely transparent. I picked it up at a local brick and mortar. But before I get going, a lot of you guys know a lot of these tactical pens out there, like I said, you can pick up cheapos on Amazon for like 12 bucks, or you can go all the way up to the stratosphere to like 350 bucks for like a Benchmade Damascus steel or something like that. Or you can, you know, skimp out and go for the $295 titanium one. Um, but a lot of knife manufacturers have gotten into the game of making pens, whether it's Benchmade, Gerber, Schrade, you guys get the idea. You know, the one thing that's common about them is that they're all... Um, have some level of craftsmanship associated with them. A lot of them use standardly available ink cartridges that are like Parker's Cross, Fisher, stuff like that. So you're not really getting some unique proprietary platform as far as the ink cartridges are concerned. What you're getting is the name recognition, maybe for the enthusiast, the collector, there's a lot of blade heads out there, that kind of stuff. And the one I'm going to be talking about today is from a company that we all know from the firearm industry. They make great grips, they make scales, they make holsters, they make rifle parts. And some of you may or may not know, but they also have a knife division that was birthed back in 2010, so about 10 years ago now, out of a collaboration. And now they make some upper end fixed blades and folders. And the company I'm talking about is Hogue. So today I'm going to be talking about the Hogue Tactical Pen. I'm going to be going over the features and specs, and then I'm going to give you some of my things that I really like about it from two different perspectives, both as an EDC pen and then also as a duty pen. And uh, then I'm going to go over some of the cons and then we're just going to kind of wrap it up. So let's get started. So the pen itself. So it comes in a nice box. I wouldn't call it collector level. So if you were uh, the, like the pen aficionado out there, you're really looking for that piece that's kind of like the, the top of the line, that kind of stuff. You're, you might be a little bit disappointed by the box, but like Hogue, everything they have is very practical. It has a purpose and it's well thought out and designed. So the box, I can give them, you know, a pass on that. So the box, you open it up, you do get a cool little Hogue knives sticker. I'm going to put these over here to the side. Okay, guys, so now let's take a look at the pen itself. It's a very nice matte black, so it's kind of like Henry Ford's old Model T. You can have it in any colors you like, as long as it's black. It's only available in black right now. You do get an extra uh, ink cartridge refill right here. I will tell you that this one is a Parker. I went out and bought a couple extras. I'll get into that in just a second, but it's a Quink Flow from Parker. That's the name of the model. I'm not making this stuff up. This one's in black. It's a standard medium ballpoint pen. They're like six bucks. You can pick them up at any brick and mortar like Staples, Office Depot, probably even Walmart or like CVS or stuff like that if, you if you're in a pinch, which is great. I'll talk more about that in a second. But yeah, you basically get the pen, pops out, 
This isn't rocket science, right? Um, I do want to say this one's been used now for a couple of weeks. It's already starting to get some finish marring on it. It's getting a little bit battle worn, if you want to call it that. It's had a mishap and it's gone through the wash already for a few minutes, uh, as things normally do. So this is a very true to life. This is what this thing's going to look like in a couple of weeks for those of you guys who are maybe worried about, you know, screwing your pen up, that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm also going to be splicing in some video of what it looked like new. So I don't want to confuse anybody or it's not sleight of hands or anything like that. These videos just take a couple of weeks sometimes to put together. So the pen itself, I'm going to move the box over here. All right. The pen is a fantastically sized pen. It's well proportioned. It's like 5.32 inches long. It's 0.55 inches in diameter. It's a nice weight at 1.6 ounces. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. It just feels like you've got a nice writing instrument in your hand. Nothing over the top, that kind of stuff. And uh, let's take a look at it from tip to back. You know, basically you have a nice rounded edge here. You've got a pretty significant indexing right here that's kind of aggressive. And then you've got some of what they call grip grooves right here, which are loosely look like serrations on a pistol slide, if you ask me. Um, it's got a two piece construction minus the cartridge. So you really got two pieces that made together. So it makes it a capless design that is huge. It's not one of the features that they talk about for, but for me, we're going to get into it in a little bit. I think it's a huge bonus. All right. Um, other things I can tell you, it's basically got like a side charging handle here to actually to deploy the, uh, the ballpoint pen, but it allows for one hand operation. We'll talk more about that. Um, it's got some neat cutaways here and contouring. So you guys can actually see here that it meets the profile. So you can actually just drop it in for those of you guys who wear it in duty shirts, stuff, stuff like that. It's well thought out. It's got a nice pocket clip here. The two screws here, um, you can see are actually micro torques. And then it does have an impact strike side that they don't say it's carbide. They don't claim it to be a glass breaker. They just call it a impact point, which I think is a really good thing. All right. So that's basically the features of it. The only thing I forgot to tell you is the price. So this thing actually retails for 90 bucks. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, you can find it for less than that, but if you're looking to pay full retail, it's about 90 bucks, which is kind of, it's still expensive. Don't get me wrong, I get that. But it's like kind of like right in the middle of between the upper stratosphere of something and then like the bottom basement of like the $12 Amazon tactical pen, right? So I do think it fills kind of that medium void right there. If you're kind of an enthusiast, you're looking for something like a nice gift, those kinds of things. It's just very understated and it just has a very classic look to it. And more than anything, it looks like a pen. So... Those are really the features and the specifications of it. I don't want to talk more about it than anything like that because that's really all there is to it. All right, so we've covered the features and specs of the pen. Now I want to talk about some things that I really like about this pen and why I think it's justified that the $90 price point is actually there's a value for it and it makes sense. And it's one of those things that I would actually, if I lost this pen, I would probably go back and I'd probably pick up another one. So I'm just kind of keeping it real here. But before I get into some of the specifics about the Hogue pen specifically, it's kind of a somber note here. I think one of the things that I think just in general, um, and I'm speaking here just kind of as a professional who works with the public, is that um, one of the things that a good pen will allow you to do is control the domain of your own like isolation precautions and things like that. Obviously, we're dealing with a lot. There's a lot of stress out right now. There's a lot of people that are totally scared um, with this whole COVID-19 thing going on and coronavirus, and they're trying to learn a lot about how they can actually space themselves, still get to get what they need to get done on a daily basis, but not be in putting themselves or anybody else in danger. And that's something that we think about all the time when we deal with the public and specifically in what I do. And it's something that's top of mind every day. And this is just really a good reminder. And when we think about antiseptic practices or you know best practices, and pens are one of those things that whether we think about it or not, anytime we have something that we come in contact with or we, we, we hand each other and we touch, you know, it's tactile. There's going to be things where, you know, there's a potential for you know bacteria viruses to be transferred things like that and pens are typically one of those things where a lot of people don't think about it but they do get a lot of transfer but they're very rarely cleaned right so that's why i want to say this is not necessarily about a hogue pen but any decent pen that's got a nice non-porous material on it it lends itself to being um easily cleaned and disinfected. And I think that that's something that's a lot of top of mind right now for a lot of people. And I just wanted to point that out there. It's just the general goodness of what, you know, some of the value of having a pen that you're going to be willing to take care of and uh, be able to clean off very quickly is something that might be valuable. So that's enough about that. But more about this pen specifically, I think there's a lot of really good things about it. And I'm going to touch base on them here. And this is probably going to be one of the most crazy things you've ever heard me say on this channel. And I've said some crazy ones, but the reason I like this pen so much 
it's because it's a really good pen. And I know that's just like one of the most profound things that anybody could ever say, but there's a lot in that. Because I think one of the things that happens in this tactical space is everybody tries to be bigger and badder than everybody else. And they have all this knurling and machining. And, you know, the thing looks like something between a Klingon warship and like Lucille. And I kind of made reference to that earlier. And sometimes we lose sight of the fact that while all of it is super cool, it's like super testosterone driven and all that kind of stuff. At some point, you just need a pen. And you like the functionality of what a tactical pen does, but you don't necessarily need all the extra baggage that comes with it. So the size of this thing is absolutely 100% spot on. It's a fantastic pen. It just writes well. It feels good in the hand. And I think that's something that Hogue has done really, really, really well with this particular pen compared to some of the others. And let me just talk about that for a second. So the size, it's one of those things where this pen actually just feels like a normal size pen. A lot of us on a, every normal day basis, whether you're using it in your normal everyday life or in a duty capacity, you look at a ballpoint pen. This is a Zebra medium point right here. You know, Pilot G2s are another one that are a favorite. And uh, just a little side note, if you guys ever have a friend in public safety who's a first responder and you don't know what to get them, just get them a 10-pack of either Zebra Mediums or uh, Pilot G2s. You can't go wrong with that. We're always losing them, or more likely than not, they're being stolen. So you, can, you can't go wrong as a gift idea. But let's get back to this. So the size of the Hogue itself is absolutely almost spot on to that of a normal ballpoint pen. And I can't stress how important that is. It's such a good thing. It just lends itself to having that normal everyday feeling where you don't have to think about where you know what's going on what's going on in my hand it just feels kind of funky all of those kinds of things and when you think about it compared to the size of like take a look at this practical tactical that i had this thing's a behemoth compared to the others and there's a couple of other things i'm going to talk about here in just a second with some considerations regarding that so yeah first and foremost the thing just feels like a pen really well and with that being said it allows me to do one-handed operation and and that's a huge one for me because I deal a lot with the public. And one of the things that I like about this particular pen as well is that along with the size and the aesthetics of it, it just flies under the radar. It's very non you know, it's very discreet. It's nondescript. It doesn't draw a lot of attention to itself. So that kind of goes into the whole thing about where some of these tactical pens can absolutely look, I'm going to be frank, just a little bit ridiculous, okay? This one does not. So if people are, if I'm on scene, one of the big things I like about this pen is people don't notice it. And that sounds absolutely crazy. Like, wait a minute, you're telling me you have this really cool pen and people don't notice it. Yeah, that's exactly why I like it because people think it's just a pen, but it gives me a couple of other things that I like about it. And that's awesome because for me, I might be on scene, I might be taking notes, I might be trying to interact with somebody, I might be listening to them. I want their undivided, you know, I want their undivided attention and maybe they want mine, those kinds of things. This thing doesn't draw attention away from what's actually going on. It allows me to focus on them. It allows me to focus on the scene. It allows me to not have to worry about taking caps off, wondering where my cap's at, drawing attention to it and where the people make the, you know, the pen, the focal point of what's going on rather than the conversation at hand. So it just does a really, really good job there. There's another thing about it where um, I like the fact that it's actually capless. And it kind of goes into the fact that it allows me not to draw attention to it. I don't have this whole big presentation. I'm not making a big deal out of things. I just pull my pen out. I, de you know, I deploy the ink if you want to be tactical about it. And you start writing, you got to do what you got to do. The other part is when that one hand operation is, I can actually use this hand to do other things. Either I might be trying to hold something down. I might have the document in my hand. I might be directing somebody. There's a lot of things that go with actually having one hand free where you're not having two handed operation. It allows me not to have to have that cognitive load. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm not focused on actual pen. I'm actually just focused on the task at hand. It allows me, as we say in our job, to get off the X. For those of you guys who know what I'm talking about, whether it's actually getting out of a, an environment that could be kind of dynamic. Maybe you don't want to be in one place. You just want to kind of get in and get out. Or maybe it's more of a like along just the lines of like, you're just trying to be, you know, efficient and you want to move on to the next thing. And you don't want to make the pen the focus where someone's like squirrel pen, you know, that kind of a thing. You're just like, all right, let's move on and just get done with business. So there's that side of it. The other thing that kind of lends itself to the size and just the overall design where Hogue, I think, has done a really good job is the fact that they put the impact strike up on top and it's a capless design. So, you know, in a lot of ways, you got this really nice contoured bottom here that kind of goes into the pocket. And it doesn't matter whether you're using it for EDC or on the job. Um, you've got it right there. And uh, the point is up on top. I'm going to talk about that here for just a second. But the biggest one, I know where all the mullet guns are really popular right now, right? But the best way I can describe this pen is it's business in front, party in the rear. You know, you're, you're ready to rock at any given moment. A lot of these pens, they're capped. It doesn't matter if they're threaded like this one or a pressure cap like the Benchmade, stuff like that. You've got two things going on here. You either got pen function or you've got 
impact strike function. And you see, I was actually looking at the pen just to do the most basic thing, making sure I was putting the cap back on. That should tell you right there that there's, you're actually drawing attention away from what you should be doing and you're, you're messing with a pen, all right? So the two-piece design takes two hands and it takes attention away from things that are going on. This one, not so much. I can do exactly what I need to do and just go right back. It's muscle memory. It just feels good. The indexing is really good. It's very comfortable to write with. The other thing regarding the size is that two things. One is it just fits in your pockets naturally. It doesn't feel big and cumbersome. The weight, it doesn't begin to weigh things down, whether you're putting your sleeves up here, if you're on duty, if you're just normal every day and you're putting it in your jean pocket, it doesn't matter. The other thing that's really important about this design, the reason I really like it, is that it doesn't have the impact strike or the carbide tip on the bottom. So it's one of those things that you don't think about until you actually actually use it or roast a, a camera, or a, excuse me, roast a, a, a screen on a phone, those kinds of a thing, which has happened to me. But think about it. You put this in the pocket, we have other stuff in our pocket, it could damage it. You put something with a strike tip or a carbide tip in it, it's gonna do some damage to what's ever in your pocket or the pocket itself. That's the other thing that I found to really like about this pen. This one here with this rounded tip doesn't destroy the insides of pockets or the pockets on my pants that I use for duty, or it doesn't pop out and poke me and jab me while I'm actually sitting in a squad, you know, in like on duty. So those are big things for me. Those are big bonus ads. So this one actually just sits right there. It kind of goes in the pockets. It doesn't get in the way. A bigger pen can actually tend to just poke through. I'm putting some stuff up on screen here. We can see it actually gouges right through those pockets. It destroys my duty pants. The length of it, as I'm just moving around all day long, starts working as a fulcrum, almost like a pry bar, and starts lifting the stitching out of these things. And then if it's in my carrier, up in the admin pouch, I drop it in there. It sits really low. It kind of jiggles around, pokes me while I'm sitting down on post, or ultimately it kind of works its way out. Or the other thing that happens is over a period of time, it loosens, this thing falls out. I go to pull my pen out and I've just got a cap, which is a huge fail. So those are really things that I, why I really, really like this pen. The other things I like about it, I like the finish. I like the fact that it's matte. It's comfortable. I've had it wet. I've had no issues with it. It stays, doesn't get slippery, anything like that. Part of it, I think, is because of the finish. Part of it is because of the actual grip grooves, or if I want to call them the serrations, whatever. I think that's super cool. I like the low profile of it. I like the side charging handle. I know they call it a lever lock or a side lock. I call it a charging handle. Um, other things I can tell you about, I like the fact that the ink cartridges are e easily replaceable. Like I said, you could go to any big box store and go find the replacement, the Parker for this thing and not have to worry about um, being out of ink. You don't have to go online. You don't have to go to a specialty store, anything like that. You can pretty much go to any big box store, grocery store, um, any place that sells pens that has that kind of a department, electronics department, if they have the pen stuff or office and school supply, you could probably find a re uh, cartridge for this thing. So those are the things that I really like about it, and there's a lot of them, but let's talk about some of the things that I think Hogue maybe has an opportunity for improvement on. This is feedback. Like I said, I bought this out of my own money. Um, the biggest thing that I think that they can do, and this is kind of a nitpick maybe for a lot of people, but I'm going to bring the box back out here, but they give you two blue ink cartridges. So one of the things like blue and black are both very legal as far as document signing and they're a good ink. They have contrast, they scan well, and a lot of places they're, they're considered a legal colored ink. The downside to it is a lot of municipalities, agents, departments, they have a preference of blue or black. And I, I feel like if Hogue, um, they're always had their attention to detail is always high. I think maybe one piece of feedback here that I would give them is put a blue, blue, uh, blue ink cartridge and a black ink cartridge in there. Let the user choose which one they want to use before they have to go right out to the store and buy another ink cartridge. I like the fact that there's a spare one in there. I just don't need two blue ones. I need black. So that was a sticking point for me. Um, it's kind of a nit. It was an extra 12 bucks on top of it to go get the black ink cartridges and an extra trip, but it was easily solved. So it kind of goes back and forth between the two. Point number two is the longevity of the finish itself. I know they have an anodized powder coating on here. Um, like I said, I went through about a four minute wash cycle before I realized this was still in my pants. I pulled it out. You guys can see here the finish is coming off. It's starting to look a, battle, a little battle worn after two weeks, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I kind of look at, but for some people out there, they might want to keep their pen nicer, especially at the price point. Um, something to think about there. Time will tell. I'll give any updates, but for the most part, it's just minimal wear. It kind of has a nice, cool, well-worn and you know, a well-worn in look, kind of like a good pair of jeans, if that's your thing. If you're looking for business slacks and you want to always look pressed, maybe not your thing. Um, and then finally, I know I said this is a biggie. It was a, pl uh, a plus for it that it's only available in black. You don't have to worry about it. It's very functional. 
I would like to maybe see a couple other colors, maybe like in a navy, um, you know, a dark green or maybe a, a charcoal gray, something that doesn't allow itself to get lost so quickly if it falls down in between your seat on a black interior in a duty capacity. A lot of our stuff is dark. We do that on purpose so that it doesn't show stains. And you have a black pen falls down into a dark, you know, in between the seats in the dark makes it a little tough. Um, it's not a big one. You know, it's kind of a, it's one of those things that's a nice to have, not a need to have. I think they've done a great job on it. But so that's basically, I, if I had to come up with three gripes, those would be, it would be the two blue ink cartridges. It would be the less than totally bomb proof finish on the powder coating. And then finally, the fact that um, maybe have a couple additional colors, but that's really it. Other than that, it's a phenomenal pen. I can't believe I did a video on a pen. I try to keep it short because it is what it is. Um, but guys, comment, like, subscribe, give me any feedback. Like I've had the Benchmades, I've lost them. Didn't really want to come back to it because it's a pressure cap and it poked the living heck out of my legs anytime I sat down and it was in my front pocket. This one doesn't do that. Um, I think they've just done a really, really good job on making a good pen that, that fills the role of a tactical pen, but it doesn't go overboard with everything that you don't need. So... That's where I'm going to leave this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notified. And uh, follow me on Instagram at Grace State Medic if you want to. But that's it for this one. Until next time, stay safe.